it was a rape scene, it would have been in the movie. Um, no reason not to shoot it. Get ready for some serious drama in the comedy world. Ice Cube just sent a strong message to Cat Williams for leaking his secrets during the Club Shay Shay interview. We're diving into what Cat revealed, Ice Cube's fiery reaction to the allegations, and all the heated arguments the interview has sparked. It's a showdown you won't want to miss. Ice Cube responds to Cat Williams. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. Cat Williams, the renowned comedian known for his bold and unfiltered humor, recently made headlines with his revelation about the controversial rape scene in the film Friday After Next. In this shocking twist, Williams opens up about his efforts to have the scene removed, emphasizing that rape is never funny. Released in 2002, Friday After Next is the third installment in the popular Friday franchise, starring Ice Cube and Mike Epps. While the film received positive reception overall, the recent revelations surrounding the inclusion of the rape scene sparked heated debates and divided opinions. Friday After Next, released in 2002, is the third installment in the popular Friday franchise, starring Ice Cube and Mike Epps. The film follows the misadventures of Craig and Day Day as they navigate the holiday season in their neighborhood. While the movie was generally well received by audiences, one particular scene caused quite a stir. The allegations that the script, which was written by Ice Cube, included a rape scene has sparked controversy and divided opinions. Some argue that it was a comedic device meant to push boundaries, while others find it offensive and insensitive. Well, Cat Williams, who who played the character Money Mike in the film, revealed that he took a stand against the scene and forced the producers to have it removed. Williams, known for his bold and unfiltered humor, approached the filmmakers with a plea to cut the scene. He firmly believed that rape should never be a subject of comedy and that its inclusion in the film undermined the overall comedic value. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy and this comedy involves a rape and rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. William's statement highlights the importance of responsible storytelling and the impact that media can have on society. His plea to remove the rape scene was not just about personal preference, but a call for greater sensitivity and awareness in the entertainment industry. Ultimately, after much deliberation, the decision was made to cut the controversial rape scene from the final version of Friday After Next. This move was seen as a significant step towards promoting Promoting, responsible storytelling and respecting the experiences of survivors. The removal of the scene demonstrated the power of advocacy and the potential for positive change within the entertainment industry. It served as a reminder that even in the world of comedy, there are lines that should never be crossed. It is important to remember that this was Cat Williams' first ever movie. As such, he had no power to dictate to the movie's producers what should and shouldn't be included for his character. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and the powers that be in his very first movie and say, respectfully, humbly, guys, Williams said. If we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull, but we're talking about comedy where I have all the credibility and all the pull. Cat Williams' revelation seemed to throw Ice Cube under the bus, considering he was the scriptwriter. It put his character under fire as people questioned why he would include a rape scene for comedic value. While the interview gained traction and went viral on the internet, Ice Cube's fans waited patiently for him to respond to the accusations before giving their opinions. True to his nature, the rapper and actor took to Twitter to address the issue and lay the rumors to rest. Ice Cube, the legendary rapper and actor, addressed the controversy surrounding the film in a candid response to Cat Williams's explosive interview. From pay disparity to casting decisions, Cube addresses the shocking claims and shares his perspective on the making of the film. Ice Cube took to Twitter with a nearly 10-minute video to address the Club Shay Shay interview and confirm the validity of most of Cat's claims. However, Cube wanted to clear up a few discrepancies and provide his own insights into the making of Friday After Next. First of all, I just want to say we shot that movie over 20 years ago so people have different perspectives and it's been a long time, Cube began. I also want to say every comedian that I've worked with, every comedian that I've put in a movie, I only put them in a movie because I thought they was funny. I thought they was perfect for the part. I tried to put them in a position to win. That's what it's all about, you know? Cube's statement highlights his commitment to showcasing comedic talent and his belief in the actors he collaborates with. It's a testament to his dedication to creating memorable and entertaining films. However, most people want 
wanted to hear what he had to say in regards to the alleged rape scene in the film. According to Ice Cube, he would never shoot a rape scene in any of his movies. In fact, judging from his previous movies, that was not his style of writing movies. Second thing I want to clear up, I would never shoot a rape scene in a movie, especially like Friday, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. We would never show that. That's not my style if you look at any of my movies, so that was never a discussion. He revealed. He also emphasized that he would never change his scripts because of any specific actor, rubbishing Kat's allegations that he was able to sway the producers to scrap the controversial scene. At that point in everybody's career, we would listen to a certain extent, but we weren't going to change the movie for any actor, Ice Cube revealed. He also clarified that at that point in time, he did whatever he wanted, and if there was such a scene to be shot, he would have shot it without any problem. We do what we feel, and if it was a rape scene, it would have been in the movie. There was no reason not to shoot it, but that's not my style. I don't even like that kind of shit in movies on camera. So that was, to me, a little discrepancy there. Cube's strong denial of the alleged rape scene reaffirms his commitment to responsible storytelling and his refusal to exploit sensitive subjects for shock value. It showcases his integrity as a filmmaker and his dedication to creating content that aligns with his values. Another issue that Ice Cube tackled in relation to Cat Williams' allegations revolved around how much actors were paid for the movie. When asked about the pay disparity past actors have complained about while working on the Friday franchise, Cat came to Cube's defense, noting that he was a black man trying to make movies without a big budget and people shouldn't have expected a huge payday. One of the actors who was vocal regarding the abysmal pay from his role in the Friday franchise was Faison Love. As it turns out, Faison Love turned down reprising his role as Big Worm because he only made $2,500 in the original film. Ice Cube took to Twitter to set the record straight. I didn't rob no f***ing body. The 1995 Friday movie cost $2.3 million to make. Shot it in 20 days. Faison worked one day, maybe two. All the actors got paid scale to do the movie. They could have simply said no, but they didn't. So miss me with that Ice Cube wrote. The rapper and actor also revealed that Chris Tucker, who played the main character, was offered 10 to 12 million dollars to appear in the second film. This was to show that actors were being paid according to the value they brought to the movie. However, Chris Tucker turned down the role for religious reasons. We were ready to pay Chris Tucker 10 to 12 million dollars to do next Friday, but he turned us down for religious reasons. He didn't want to cuss or smoke weed on camera anymore. In an interview, Chris Tucker opened up about his decision to distance himself from the Friday films despite the fact they were responsible for his big break and his work words corroborate Ice Cube's explanation that weed was a big reason behind why he refused to return. Back then, I gotta tell you, one of the reasons why I didn't do the second one was because of the weed, he revealed. Because I said, man, that movie became a phenomenon. I don't want everybody smoking weed and I never really told people this because I kind of forgot about it. But it was one of the reasons why I didn't do it. Because I said, I don't want to represent everybody smoking weed. Ice Cube was forced to defend himself once again after the Cat Williams interview in regards to how much he paid actors for the Friday franchise. According to to the rapper and actor, the films were low budget and everyone was paid according to their worth and role in the movies. A lot of people talking about pay and how much they was paid in these movies that were extremely low budget. Most of these guys worked a couple of days. When you do in a movie, there's over 100 people working that gotta get paid, he said. He also reasoned that the franchise helped launch most of the actors' careers, including Cat Williams, since it was his first movie. Any actor that's mad at what they got paid, just look at what you was doing. Look at where your career was at the time and take a look at where it is now. Friday had something to do with that, I believe. Ice Cube revealed that he had no ill feelings towards Cat Williams. In fact, he praised Cat Williams for the role that he played in ensuring the movie became a success, even crediting him for helping him write a good chunk of the script. Cat wrote a lot of his part because, like I said, he was giving us jewels, so we were keeping the camera rolling. He was coming off the dome. He was coming prepared every day to steal the show. That was his mission, and that's what he did, and it launched his career. And I'm proud of the movie. I'm proud of all the guys who have come through a cute Vision production and went on to do bigger and better things, Ice Cube said. Ice Cube has nothing but love for the legendary Cat Williams, which he revealed on his Twitter post. According to him, Cat always came to his defense, which he appreciated immensely. I got love for all the comedians that I've worked with. Got, you know, much love for Cat. You know, he, uh, he spoke up for me a lot. Cube's final remarks highlight his admiration for Cat's talent and his pride in the film's success. It's a testament to the collaborative effort that went into creating Friday After Next and the positive impact it had on the careers of those involved. However, Ice Cube was not the only celebrity who was put on the spotlight by Cat Williams. Various celebrities found themselves on the receiving end of harsh criticism and were prompted to respond. Celebrities react to Cat Williams' interview. 
There is no doubt that responses would come streaming in, especially with a video that has over 50 million views. Comedians and other celebrities came out to defend themselves against Cat Williams' allegations. One of them was Kevin Hart. According to Cat Williams, Kevin Hart is a Hollywood puppet whose career statistics have been overly inflated. He claimed that in 15 years in Hollywood, no one had a memory of a sold-out Kevin Hart show. Cat Williams also alleged that Kevin Hart already had his deals in play when he arrived in Hollywood, and that he had his own sitcom and movie in his first year in LA. He claimed that it was virtually impossible to imagine all that in the first year of comedy, alluding that Kevin Hart had his deal before joining the industry. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No. He stated this further insinuating that Kevin Hart was an industry plant and that these accolades that he now holds with the movie and sitcom will never happen to anybody else after him. According to Williams, in his 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. He claimed that there was never a line for Hart and that he never received a standing ovation at any comedy club. These comments directly challenged Hart's status as one of the most successful and popular comedians in the industry. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. Williams seemed to question the authenticity of Hart's success, implying that it was not based on genuine talent or widespread appeal. He suggested that Hart's fame was manufactured and that he had not truly earned his place in the comedy world. The remarks made by Williams were shocking and unexpected, especially considering the success and recognition that Hart has achieved throughout his career. Hart has consistently sold out arenas and has a massive following of fans who eagerly attend his shows. Naturally, these allegations caught the attention of Kevin Hart, who took to Twitter to respond. In his tweet, Kevin Hart didn't deny anything that Cat Williams said, but instead took a more subtle approach. He wrote, gotta get that anger out, champ. It's honestly sad. While his response may seem cryptic, it's clear that Kevin Hart is not letting the negativity affect him. In fact, he took the opportunity to promote his upcoming movie, Lift. It's interesting to note that Kevin Hart's response didn't directly address the allegations made by Cat Williams. Instead, he chose to focus on moving forward and continuing to work on his successful career. This response, or lack thereof, speaks volumes about Kevin Hart's confidence and ability to rise above the drama. It's clear that he's not letting the negativity get to him, and he's determined to keep pushing forward. In another interview done five days after the video release, Kevin Hart said, he doesn't feed into all the drama Cat has created, alluding that it's all part of entertainment. I don't feed into the stuff at all. At the end of the day, it's it's all entertainment to a certain degree. So you just hope that people can be smart enough and have a tremendous amount of logic to just go and possibly do research or fact check. While Kevin Hart's response may seem subtle, it's important to remember that actions speak louder than words. Despite the allegations made by Cat Williams, Kevin Hart's success speaks for itself. He has become one of the most recognizable and beloved comedians in the industry with a string of successful movies, stand-up specials, and a massive fan base. He, however, wasn't the only comedian who responded to Cat. Michael Blackson was next. But what exactly had Cat said about Michael Blackson in the interview? Cat claimed that he told Michael Blackson to style up according to the role he has portrayed himself to be. Blackson was used to wearing dirty dashiki and African fashion print while performing his comedy acts. After Cat saw that he said he needed to dress according to the role he was portraying, which was a king. And I told him he needed to dress to be in the position that he's trying to say that he's in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. Cat Williams tried to insinuate that Blackson's comedy wasn't mature and well thought of. Blackson took offense to the fact that Cat took credit over the school idea. Blackson had earlier on built a school in Ghana, his hometown. The school would offer free tuition to the students of his hometown, Agonan Saba. The construction started in 2020, and the Liberian Ghanaian actor comedian cut the ribbon to the school's opening in January 2023, something he was very proud of and couldn't believe Cat was taking all the credit. He took to social media to say, I can't believe this lying, dehydrated leprechaun said he told me to build a school, Omao. I only built a free school so the kids can whip your a for free mata sucker. Williams further went to take more jabs at Michael, mocking how an African could do comedy with a fake African accent. These words struck a nerve with Blackson and the comedy community as a whole. The accusation of a fake African accent left many wondering about the authenticity of Blackson's comedic style and persona. The impact of Williams' comments reverberated through social media, with fans and fellow comedians weighing in on the controversy. Blackson, known for his quick wit and sharp comebacks, wasted no time in responding to Williams' remarks. Taking to Twitter, he expressed 
expressed his confusion and frustration, sharing personal experiences of being roasted for his accent both in school and in American comedy clubs. I'm so confused, I'm African with a fake African accent. My accent had me roasted every day in school and in the comedy clubs in America, and I wish I could get rid of it. Even my Philly accent is fake. I guess the only thing real about me is my dick. Blackson felt that Cat attacked all top 10 comedians so that they could respond to him, and hence making him relevant again. Cat Williams is a very smart midget who took shots at the top 10 comedians alive today so we can all respond and make him relevant again. Whether this was a strategy or not, one thing is for sure. The internet has blown up with more fiery responses to Cat Williams, and Cedric didn't go mute either. Cedric the Entertainer found himself embroiled in a heated feud with fellow comedian Cat Williams. The controversy stems from Williams' accusations of joke theft, claiming that Cedric stole one of his jokes and used it in his own comedy special. The allegation sent shockwaves through the comedy community, as Cedric's reputation as a comedic genius was called into question. But Cedric wasn't about to let these accusations go unanswered. In an interview with E.T., he claimed that Cat Williams' allegations weren't factual. People get on these blogs and they just start spewing off stuff that's not even factual. I let the fodder just go out there until I'm ready to respond to it. I am who I am. I stand on that for sure. He did not stop there. In a bold and defiant move, Cedric took to social media to address the claims head on. Within the comment section of the Club Shay Shay Instagram page, where Cat's accusatory clip was first shared, Cedric made his stance clear. Revisionist history, regardless of whatever Cat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims is his. Cedric's response was a powerful statement, asserting that his career was far more than a single joke. With over 40 movies, numerous comedy specials, and a brand that speaks volumes, Cedric's accomplishments in the entertainment industry are undeniable. I've been over 40 movies. My specials and brand speaks volumes for I Am. From his breakout role in The Steve Harvey Show to his unforgettable performances in films like Barbershop and the original Kings of comedy, Cedric has left an indelible mark on the world of comedy. The people I have put on, including Cat in the Hat at the Gibson Amphitheater, speak for themselves. Cedric's comment not only highlighted his own success, but also emphasized the impact he has had on launching the careers of other comedians, including Cat Williams himself. It was a bold statement, reminding everyone that Cedric's influence in the comedy world extends far beyond a single joke. From his successful movies to his unforgettable comedy specials, Cedric's talent and influence are undeniable. He has not only entertained audiences, audiences, but also paved the way for other comedians. Well now, the feud has escalated with both comedians trading verbal blows, leaving the comedy world buzzing with anticipation, leading us to one more person who had something to say to Cat Williams. Steve Harvey followed. Cat Williams accused Harvey of stealing the concept of his 1990s sitcom, The Steve Harvey Show, from Mark Curry's Hanging with Mr. Cooper. The allegations sent shockwaves through the comedy community, leaving many wondering if it was true or not. Sad for Steve, Mark Curry has in the past addressed this issue, and he seems to side with Cat, saying, that he did not understand why Steve stole his material, yet he had already made a lot of money. When he was on his the the, the bullshit talk show he had, and he did he he did all my Halloween material one Halloween. I'm watching that. Uh, somebody called me said, "Man, homeboy doing your material." So he did my whole Halloween run, and I know he didn't think of it. You know, this this is true stuff that really happened to me. Uh -huh. And so my thing is, you don't have to do that, homeboy. But that is not all that Williams exposed. He went on to insult Harvey's acting skills and claimed that Harvey never wanted to be a movie star. According to Williams, Harvey couldn't make it in Hollywood because he lacked range and didn't fit the mold of a leading character. You couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You have to have range. These scathing remarks ignited a firestorm of controversy, with fans and industry insiders eagerly awaiting Harvey's response. And it didn't take long for Harvey to address the accusations in his own unique way. Harvey took to social media to deliver his epic response. In a Twitter post featuring him on the set of Family Feud, Harvey shared a powerful message with his audience. He began by stating that one never needs to explain themselves to haters, emphasizing the importance of action speaking louder than words. No, you ain't gotta tell nobody nothing. All you gotta do is be it. You don't have to open your mouth. The comedian said, with Cat rubbing his fellow comedians the wrong way, we can only wait and see what comes out of all this beef.